All right, let's move into the college football week nine preview. Every week I ask Chris four questions leading into the week. And, brother, we've got some some fun stuff. Uh, my first question, best games of the weekend. I think we can go ahead and start off with Michigan-Michigan State, uh, but there's a bunch of other ones, right? Michigan-Michigan uh, State is kind of the epicenter of the sport this weekend. Uh, you got game day, you got Barstool, you got Fox. Like, all of them are going to be there. Fox is the one that gets to broadcast it. Uh, but it's a battle of undefeated. It's a battle of top ten teams. Uh, it's an in-state rivalry. Like, that's going to be a massive, massive game. You got any You got any other ones that you were thinking about? Yeah, I I think there's a game out in California that's going to be amazing. It, the Fresno State, uh, San Diego State game. Yes. Yes, indeed. You know, I, I wrote down one that's not on everybody's radar that I think could end up being a lot of fun. UCLA and Utah. It, it's not in California, but it's you know it's West Coast. That, I mean, it's again, this is not exactly undefeated teams, but I, both of those teams are fun and they are highly volatile. You don't know what you're going to get from week to week. I think that could be a hell of a ball game. Uh, I've got, let's see, I had SDSU and Fresno State a little bit off the radar. Virginia going to BYU, I think, could be very interesting. It's Broncos' return to BYU. That one could be nutso. Because the, the Virginia offense has completely shifted. I tweeted earlier in the week about the complete offensive philosophy shift that that they have had at Virginia. Because it was just 2018 when Virginia was running the ball over 60% of the time. And now, like this year, they are running the ball less than 40% of the time. They have completely shifted to a passing offense. And, and it's a lot of fun. So I'd like to see Brennan Armstrong in that bunch against BYU. Tell me about SMU and Houston. How, how much are you looking forward to this one? Yeah, that one, that's a game that's on my list. You know, two coaches that I love and two coaches that I think are great. And they throw the football a lot. Yes. Yes. The, a, the, another uh, underrated part of this, I talked about it on the BetUS show, uh, Houston's defense, if you look at their raw numbers, they are un friggin believable Like, they're top five in defensive efficiency this year. Like they can get after the quarterback, they are unreal. SMU has not played a single defense that's anything close to this. So I, I want to see what Houston looks like against an offense like this. I want to see what SMU's offense looks like against a defense like this. So I'm I'm pretty excited about that one. You got any any other ones that are on your list here? Uh, I mean, you know, do do we think Ohio State, Penn State's going to be good at all? I did not even write it down. <laughs> but, but, uh, I about to say. Seriously, outside of name brand only, that game's not going to be entertaining at all. Is it? I don't think so. I don't think Penn State can score. Like I, I think Sean Clifford is still hurt, and so long as he's hurt, I just there's almost no reason to watch this other than for the jerseys. I guess. Like I think there's more interesting games that are going on at the same time. For example, yep. uh, Jordan Hare. You got Ole Miss headed to Auburn. Who in the world knows what to expect out of those two teams? Well, I was, I was about to get to the SEC, but yeah, yeah, that's it. That's one. That's so. one. And then we haven't even brought up the cocktail party. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, but is that one going to be one of the best games of the weekend? That, do we think Florida can no, hang no, in? No, no. It won't be one of the best. It won't be one of the best games. I do think Florida hangs in there. I think this game's closer than people think. Uh, Florida. Like, I don't uh, know that it's going to be a fourteen point game. I think it. I bet, I, you know. At Florida, I Florida's do think. Be in this game. I do think like Florida is better than their record, but that's a team that makes so many mistakes, man. I mean, they just drive me nuts. If you look at at the numbers that they've put up on on teams. Uh, the advanced stats or whatever, uh, this should be a team that's only got one loss on the season. Like, they should have beaten Alabama. Uh, they should have beaten Kentucky. The only loss that they should have is LSU, uh, if you just look yep. at numbers. Uh, but, you know, obviously, these games are not played on paper, so <laughs> so that's the way it goes. Uh, who has the most to gain this weekend? Uh, I've got uh, I got a couple of different options here. All right, give me your options, because I've got a couple too, but it's Pending they win or lose. Yeah, because typically in situations like this, you can have a team that has the most to gain and the most to lose, right? For the most to gain, I put Wisconsin. They were written off early. And this is a team that has adapted, and they have figured out what they're good at. They have taken the ball out of Graham Mertz's hands. They are running the ball 77% of the time in their last three games. It turns out he can't throw interceptions if he's not throwing the football. So... They are putting their team in a better position to succeed. They win this game. They're in the driver's seat to win the Big Ten West, which is exactly where the majority of people thought they would be to begin the season. 
And, you know, Iowa, we could say Iowa's got the most to lose if you want to. I, I didn't have them written down for it. But I, Iowa, I, I think everything started out so hot for them that they have not had to face that adversity yet. You know, they're coming off of a loss against Purdue. Uh, you know, if they lose this game, how much time do they have to adapt? And and then at that point, you have to hope that Wisconsin loses to Minnesota or somebody else along those lines. But Wisconsin would be in the driver's seat if they get this one. Yeah, that, that's, that's a big one. I mean, obviously the winner of the Michigan-Michigan State game I think is a huge, huge deal because there's a chance that that team – let's say that team goes on to be a one-loss team, okay? Let's say that whoever wins this game loses to Ohio State, all right? And then Ohio State goes on to win the Big Ten. Does that team have any shot at going to the playoff over a one-loss Alabama? Well, I guess if Bama doesn't beat Georgia, then they wouldn't have one loss anyway. So, so, so let's say a two loss Bama, a two loss Bama, I think is just out period. Have, like, yeah, I, so, I think so. The winner of this game could still lose to Ohio State, win out, beat Penn State, basically win out, and still have and, a shot at the playoff, and, and have a shot at the playoff. So I think and while it's the biggest game of the weekend, it's it's also one of the most important outcomes because it's in essence a playoff game. Yeah. No, you're you're right. You're 100 percent right. Uh, I am I'm very curious about it. Uh, the other that I had for most to gain is Ole Miss. They have lost five straight to Auburn. You you get this monkey off your back, and you got Liberty next week, which is you know a threat. Then you host Texas A and M on November 13th. Then you got Vanderbilt, and you got at Mississippi State, which I think they can win both of those. If you can get past this one, you might be able. And, and and I would imagine it's going to be pretty close next week, but I think you might be able to get some guys a little bit of rest next week because I think that you can I think you can beat Liberty comfortably, but you know going into A and M like that might be the last real test that you've got, and then all you need is is Auburn to beat Alabama at the end of the season, and you could have a shot at Ole Miss going to Atlanta. So Ole Miss needs to win this game this weekend because the schedule kind of sets up for them after that. Yeah, that's right. And so you uh, you got another one for most to gain, or you want to move to uh, most to lose? Uh, I mean, I, I would. That that's that's probably the answer. I was I was looking at other other sides of this, and and most to gain being teams that like Baylor. Does Baylor beating Texas matter? Like, does that help them? They're a one loss team. You know, it, it, is that a big deal or not? Is it important or not? It'll it'll always be important for the rivalry. I don't know how important it is in the overall scheme of things, right? So, I mean, we could say the same thing about, like, Iowa State heading to West Virginia, right? Iowa State, yeah. uh, if they lose, eh, okay. You know, well, they already had two losses on the season. Uh, but if they win, you know, they continue. They've only got one loss in the Big 12. That's a team that could absolutely continue rolling on. So, I, you know, there's, there's things... There's other games that obviously you can you can pick at, okay. but you know we'll we'll stick with these for now I guess. For most to lose, uh, I've got I got two different options here. No, I've got one. All right, I want to hear yours first because I don't think either of mine are good. <laughs> I think I think the University of Kentucky has the most to lose. Okay, that is that's a really good one. That's a really good one. Yes, going to Mississippi State this weekend in Starkville, only a one and a half point favorite. That's yeah, yeah. You lose this one, you kind of lose all There's, of that hype that you built up, all that yep. goodwill. All, all the hype is gone. All of it. The shine is completely off the apple. Well, and then you have to start thinking. You know, not so much about the, because it, I think you're almost guaranteed that you are going to end up second in the East uh, because it, you know Florida would have four losses in conference if they lose to Georgia. Uh, but Kentucky's schedule sets up. They've got Tennessee after this. Then they got at Vanderbilt, New Mexico State, and at Louisville. So if you lose to Mississippi State, well, then all of a sudden you got a little doubt going into Tennessee coming to the Commonwealth next weekend. That could that could certainly be uh, very interesting. Very interesting. I had uh, Clemson against Florida State. Uh, the reason that I put Clemson on here because Clemson's already been bad. But if they lose this one, this is actually a program that you do not want to give life to. Uh, I think Florida State has played significantly better over the last three games, right? They are they are winning again. They look good. Their recruits are excited right now. Uh, you start to build momentum with this program, you know, 
if Clemson goes down to Florida State this weekend at home, that is a big time recruiting pitch for Norvell and the Seminoles. Uh, I think that could be a massive spot. So Clemson, I think, has has the most to lose this weekend. I've also got two other ones, and they they play each other. I brought it up already. UCLA and Utah. These are two teams that had high hopes for winning the Pac-12 South this year. Whichever team loses this, uh, I think they've got the most to lose because it would be the fourth loss for either of them before you even get to November. And and I don't know that anybody necessarily saw that happening because they, like these are two teams that were majorly hyped heading into this season. You get four losses before November, and, and your season's done. And then you got to worry about kids still being bought in, right? Yeah. No, I agree. I completely agree with that. You uh, you got a playoff sleeper this week? I mean, in, in, it's, outside <laughs> of what I just talked about with the Michigan Michigan State game, that's I, I wrote down Michigan State. I think that's the only answer. Like at this time of the year, once we get later in the season, there's not a whole lot of playoff sleepers that we hadn't already talked about. Uh, you know, we talked about Pitt uh, as a possibility. I guess we could bring up Wake Forest. You know, they play against Duke. You know, Duke's not good. But this this week eight it doesn't have anything to do with them being a playoff sleeper. Yeah, like now, Wake has way bigger games down the stretch. Like they get through this one, then they are going to have to deal with. I think they've still got Clemson. I think they've still got. Uh, gosh, I can't even remember. But they they've got like big big games left, and I I think we kind of expected them to be like, you know, eight and four. They're seven and zero right now. Here we go. Wake Forest schedule right now. They got North Carolina, North Carolina State, Clemson, and Boston College to end the season. Uh, I think that they can, I think they can beat everybody left on their schedule. Like they could absolutely yeah. go and defeat. So that's that's somebody that we can we can talk about once we get to one of those bigger matchups. If if they get through Duke and they get through North Carolina, November thirteenth, that might be our playoff sleeper. <laughs> if if they can beat NC State, then maybe we start believing before they play at Clemson and at Boston College. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.